So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, good afternoon. We are going to have our Ato Friday seminars are going to start. And I'm pleased to introduce our speaker this week. Um, he will be Professor Dejan Milosevic from Sarajevo. In fact, I know Dejan since a long time. We overlap many, 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 many years ago in the Max Born Institute Berlin. And he has been doing since decades a really hard work in, in Sarajevo. And he is a full professor of theoretical physics at the Faculty of Science, University of Sarajevo. Uh, his main areas of research are atomic and molecular processes in strong laser fields and atom science. And he is the only physicist, and this is a big deal, really big deal. He was the only physicist who is a full member of the Academy of Sciences and Arts of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And he's also a member of the European Academy of Sciences and Arts. And he has a lot, a lot of awards. And I am going to highlight here one, which is the individual 6th of April award of the city of Sarajevo, which is the highest decoration given by the city of Sarajevo. And he has also a uh, Georg Foster Research Award by the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. He's a founder of SAMOFIS, Sarajevo Atomic Molecular and Optical Physics Research Group. And um, if you haven't been to Sarajevo, I think it's really uh, a great experience. I went there many years ago for the laser physics uh, conference. Um, and it is a very historic city, it's very interesting. You have uh, a lot of things going on and you can still see um, that it has a quite interesting, but also quite tough past. But I, I definitely recommend, and Dejan is doing an amazing work. He founded a group there uh, in strong field and auto science. So I'm really happy uh, to announce his talk today. He's a really nice guy as well. I know him for a long time. And he'll talk about strong field induced processes in complex laser field. So, Dejan, feel free to start your talk. Here we go. Okay, thank you, Carla. Thank you very much for the invitation and for this uh, uh, very nice uh, introduction. Okay, so I will share the screen. I suppose you are seeing it. So I will talk about strong field induced processes in a complex laser fields. And uh, the outline of my talk. So uh, I will first uh, uh, say something about strong field processes, about the three-step model. Then I will explain what I mean by complex fields and uh, show some uh, examples, uh, high harmonic generation by bicircular field, high order ATI by bicircular field. Uh, then uh, I will switch to Another uh, complex uh, field, this is OTC field and uh, BOTC field, and consider only high harmonic generation by this field. And at the end, I will present uh, some uh, new result uh, uh, of set trifurcation in uh, asymmetry of the carrier envelope phase in high order ADI by field cycle pulses. And at the end, I will give some uh, conclusions and uh, perspectives. Okay, so let me start. Uh, so strong field processes can be divided into two groups, uh, laser assisted processes and laser induced processes. So laser assisted processes can happen uh, in the absence of the laser field. And one example is the electron atom scattering observed in uh, 1977. Uh, there are some additional peaks in the photoelectron spectrum which correspond to absorption or emission of the laser photon. But I will not talk about laser assisted processes. Uh, I will talk about the laser induced processes. So these are processes which can happen only in the presence of the laser field. And the example is uh, ATI or EBA threshold ionization discovered in 1979 by Agostini and others. Uh, as a small peak here, in the photoelectron spectrum, some additional peaks uh, here. So this means that uh, one photon 
is uh, more is absorbed than is necessary for ionization. Okay, so uh, and uh, okay, there are many other such processes, but I will consider in addition to ATI also high harmonic uh, generation. And uh, here is uh, one example of uh, high order ATI spectra. I took it from uh, 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 this review article and spectra was recorded uh, by Gerhard Paul's group in July 93. Uh, what you can see here is uh, for a linear polarized field, this a red line. Uh, you can, you, uh, in the photoelectron spectrum, you have a plateau and the cutoff for a linear polarized. Uh, for, for circular polarization, you just have exponential decrease of the uh, count uh, as uh, with increase of the photoelectron energy. So uh, this first part uh, is low energy part, which correspond to the direct electron. And uh, this plateau and cutoff correspond to rescattered electron. So there is a recent uh, review article in which you can find more detail. But uh, uh, I want to explain a three-step model, which can be used to explain uh, uh, this uh, process. Uh, so what you can see here is uh, uh, linearly polarized electric field vector. Uh, this is, is a red line, and you can see uh, atomic potential. And uh, when the electric field or laser field is has maximum, uh, this uh, potential barrier is uh, uh, decrease. And then you can have tunneling, and electron is uh, born in the continuum and start moving in the laser field. And the laser field uh, uh, change the sign. So the electron turn around and come back uh, uh, to the parent ion. This is the third step of this process. Uh, uh, when electron return, it can elastically scatter of the parent ion and then go to the detector. And on its way uh, in the laser field, it absorbs a lot of energy. And you can calculate classically this uh, cutoff, uh, which is at 10 UP. And semi-classical, there is some correction which depends on the ionization potential. So this is the maximum energy which I don't have. So what is important for this process? Uh, it is, uh, if you look at the laser field, this is a one optical cycle. And this is usually uh, a few femtoseconds. But the uh, uh, important process is here when you have rescattering and this recollision uh, happens during a small part of the optical cycle. So uh, we are in the attosecond region and this is uh, practically science, and this is uh, just uh, connected to this seminar because seminar is uh, at a Friday. And another thing is that the trajectory of the electrons are linear so one dimensional because the field is linearly polarized. Uh, high harmonic generation is very similar process and it was discovered uh, earlier in 1987. And uh, two first steps are the same as for a high order ATI, but the third step is change. And when electron return, it recombine to the ground state and uh, one high harmonic photon is emitted, having energy uh, about three U, uh, UP, UP is quantum relative energy and some quantum correction here. Uh, so uh, what happened? You have strong laser field, you have some, uh, for example, inner gas, argon gas, and then high, higher harmonics uh, of the fundamental field are emitted and they can be a few hundred or even few thousand. So practically you have a, a soft X-rays uh, and uh, they are uh, coherent and uh, they are characterized by a plateau and uh, a cutoff. So what I mean by complex field, so we have this linear polarized field uh, by now, but it's monochromatic. We can uh, generalize it to bichromatic field or to field cycle pulse and so on. 
But the important thing is to introduce the second dimension. This means that field developed uh, in the plane. And the simplest example is elliptically polarized monochromatic field. But the additional example is, uh, uh, for example, a bichromatic field. And you have two components. And for each of components, you have a lot of parameters with which you can control the process. So there are frequencies, uh, there are ellipticities, there are intensities of both components, and there is a relative phase between the component. And if you go to uh, pulses, then you can have envelopes. You can have a carrier envelope phase for each of these components. Uh -huh. You can have a delay between the components. And so on, there is a lot of combinations uh, and uh, different complex or uh, tailored fields. And uh, what I will consider a bicircular field and OTC field. So uh, we have seen that uh, uh, this three step model and the uh, dynamics uh, of the electron is uh, one dimensional because the field is linearly polarized. But we want to find a better way to explore structure and dynamics or more complex targets such as molecules. So we should find the appropriate field configuration that possess particular symmetry properties. And we also want that uh, uh, to have a possibility that electron return back to the parent ion. And two solutions which I will mention are bicircular field. This field which consists of two coplanar counter rotating circular polarized field of uh, different frequency, R omega and S omega. And another example is orthogonally polarized two color field. Again, frequencies R omega, S omega, but in this case, result will depend on the relative phase between the components. So you can see uh, up a uh, uh, bicircular field and uh, lower a uh, OTT field for the two different uh, frequency combination, omega two omega and omega three omega. What is presented blue line is a electric field vector and the red line is a vector potential. So you see here there are three lobes for omega two omega combination, uh, four lobes for omega three omega for bicircular and so on. We can generalize this to uh, R omega S omega. And for ODT field, uh, you have uh, uh, for omega two omega this and for omega three omega this. And uh, uh, why these fields are important. So, sorry, if you look uh, uh, at the electric field vector, you see that there are parts of uh, uh, this field which are close to linear polarization also here and for OTT fields here and here. So if electron is ionized here and recombines here, then it moves in approximately linearly polarized field and uh, this three-step model will work. So let's uh, start with examples. So this is a high harmonic generation by bicircular field, uh, omega two omega combination. So what you can see there is a, uh, sorry, uh, plateau and the cutoff. Sorry. And uh, you see every third harmonic is uh, missing and the uh, harmonic three N plus minor one are emitted. And important is that they are uh, circularly polarized with helicity plus and uh, minor one. So uh, you see uh, that what really happened that uh, we have a part of the field which is close to linear. So electron is ionized or atom is ionized here. So electrons start moving, uh, the field change sign, electron return and uh, recombine to the ground state and one high harmonic photon is emitted. And this is repeated three times uh, in one optical cycle. So these harmonics are really absurd in experiment and they are uh, very strong. Uh, here is uh, another combination. Uh, this is three omega, five omega, and it was realized in this experiment in PNAS paper. So you have uh, uh, eight lobes, electron is ionized here and recombined here. And 
This is repeated eight times in the optical cycle. So we calculated this uh, process uh, using strong field approximation and quantum orbit theory. So I, I will show later how this theory looks like, but important is that from quantum orbit theory, you can uh, calculate the uh, partial ionization, uh, partial uh, harmonic emission rate and uh, uh, you can find uh, which are the dominant electron trajectories. And uh, for this case, there are eight such trajectories. And uh, one is, uh, uh, for example, electron is uh, born here, few atomic units away from the uh, origin, and then it uh, moves in the laser field, turn around, come back and recombine to the origin. And this is repeated eight times. Uh, of this experiment is practically one application of the high harmonic generation by uh, by circular field. So what you can see here, these are the wavelengths, which correspond to three omega, five omega case, and you obtain circular polarized harmonics and act with them on some magnetic material, which possess uh, circular dichroism. So it behaves differently for left and right circularly polarized uh, uh, X-rays. And uh, from this, you can learn something about uh, uh, this magnetic material. I think it was a gadolinium ferrum. So this is just one application of the uh, high harmonic generation by, by circular field. In fact, uh, uh, for our group in Sarajevo, we use these uh, uh, results from 2000 uh, to construct the logo of our group because it's a nice picture. So what is presented here is a, a group of uh, uh, high harmonics generated by omega to omega by circular field. And you see some unusual shape here. And it happened that uh, uh, this was observed really in the experiment a uh, few years ago, which confirmed this, uh, uh, our theory. Okay, so uh, you can look at the uh, uh, detail of SFA theory, quantum orbit theory in this uh, half review article in uh, journal Modern Optics. So we have a bicircular general case, R omega, S omega. Uh, we have several point solution classified so we can find all partial contribution and uh, uh, we can find which orbit is dominant uh, uh, and analyze uh, uh, as a function of different parameters, for example, relative intensity of the component. Uh, we can also analyze different uh, uh, ground state. Uh, it's different if you have S state or P state, uh, for example, neon, uh, you can obtain a, a high helicity asymmetry parameter. And with this, you can uh, generate highly elliptically polarized attosecond pulses. And here is just one example, which was uh, selected for the kaleidoscope in Fizre Bay. So this is how the group of uh, high harmonics uh, looks like. It's elliptically polarized. Okay, now I switch to uh, ATI. And the first paper on uh, ATI by, uh, by circular field was these later physics letters in 2007. And this was only for the direct electron. So what you can see for the dielectric electron, uh, if you look at the vector potential, this red line, then if you look at the momentum distribution, we see that uh, it follows the minor vector potential. And you see there is some rotational symmetry and there is also a reflection symmetry along this axis. So everything can be explained uh, using this uh, theory which we applied. Uh, however, we are wanted in the Riscate the electron. And this was in this paper 2016. Uh, you see that uh, uh, reflection symmetry is violated, but this uh, threefold rotational symmetry is uh, preserved and uh, it's observed in this uh, case. Okay, here are some other combination, for example, uh, omega four omega. Uh, you see it is here. So you have a five-fold symmetry here. 
and uh, omega-3, omega-4. Uh, so you have practically rotational symmetry for 90 degree and many other combinations. Uh, what is important, uh, I think it's important here, is that uh, we can uh, use quantum audit theory and calculate partial contribution to the ionization rate. And we can distinguish between forward and backward scattering orbits. And uh, uh, you see uh, uh, for low energy importance are these, uh, we classify these with some number new rho mu, these orbits, so we can calculate all of them. So uh, these are important in a low energy region. And in high energy region, these are backscattering electron, only one uh, pair of quantum orbit is presented. So if you combine all of them, this means these three pair of, of orbit, you obtain this structure, which is uh, approximately the same as exact numerical calculation. So uh, using only uh, this uh, small number of orbit, we can obtain the whole spectrum. So why this is important? Uh, if you look at the momentum distribution and some partial, uh, some particular region, for example, here, uh, this is exact calculation. And here uh, is uh, uh, in this region, uh, back, backward scattering quantum orbits contribute. And uh, having uh, these uh, uh, quantum orbits, uh, we can calculate electron trajectories. And this is what is presented uh, here. So practically uh, to this region, uh, we can identify the electron trajectory. So in this case, the electron is born a few atomic units away from the nucleus, and then move in the laser field, go up, turn around, come back, rescatter, and then go under 50 degree to the detector. And there are other orbits which contribute, but this one is dominant. So <clears throat> knowing which orbits are dominant, we can uh, uh, control the process. Okay, here is another example from kaleidoscope. Uh, this is omega three omega case. Uh, we, of course, we generalize this to the molecular <coughs> system, more complicated system. And this is another one from kaleidoscope uh, with molecules. And uh, okay, now I will switch to the OTC laser field. It has uh, two orthogonal components with different uh, intensities and different uh, frequencies and different phases. This is omega two omega combination, which depend on the uh, relative phase. Uh, we present only the result for uh, uh, high harmonic generation by this field. And just at the beginning mentioned that first experiment were in 93 and another one at 95 and strong enhancement of harmonic generation was found in this reference in 2005. And after that, there are hundreds of references, but they are mainly considered omega two omega combination. Uh, what I will present now is uh, uh, our recent result for the omega three omega case. Uh, we found unusual shape. I will show this later. And there is also, uh, from the last year, we consider a dialectical OTT field. And there are also some interesting results. And after that, we generalize this to homonuclear, heteronuclear, and polyatomic molecules. But I don't have time to present this. You can look at uh, uh, these uh, references. So the theory is uh, uh, the following. So we calculate harmonic intensity. And we have a two components, X and Y, of the T matrix element, which are calculated as an integral over a, a recombination time of the time-dependent dipole. And time-dependent dipole is integral over a ionization time and intermediate electron momenta. If you solve the, the integral over the intermediate electron momenta using the saddle point method, this time dependent dipole reduced to only one integral over the travel time, some product of the matrix element, and some action in the exponent. Next, we having this uh, T matrix component, we can calculate 
a repetity of a particular harmonic, we can calculate the, the corresponding electric field vector. And also we can calculate coherent uh, ratio of the coherent to incoherent sample harmonic intensity. Okay, now I will show some result. So uh, I start with the omega two omega combination and uh, 800 nanometer. So for uh, linear polarized field, this blue line, you have a plateau and the cutoff. If you have two omega linear polarized field, uh, harmonic intensity is uh, higher, but the cutoff is lower. Uh, on the other hand, if you use omega two omega field, you see uh, you have a, a, a plateau and the cutoff. So it's uh, high intensity and uh, relatively high cutoff. And you have uh, uh, even and odd harmonics which behave differently. But in general, the shape is that you have a plateau and the cutoff. Uh, this is for 800 nanometer. Now we increase the wavelength to 1300 and you see the shape is completely changed. This is some kind of parabolic shape, no clear plateau, plateau and cutoff, and they are different between even and odd harmonics. Both of them are linearly polarized, but in a perpendicular direction. So now we switch to 2200 nanometer. This is for helium and for uh, uh, those intensities, so slightly higher uh, intensity of the first component. If we calculate for bicircular field, this is what we obtain, so relatively low uh, harmonics. If we switch to omega-3, omega bicircular field, it's higher, but uh, harmonic order is even lower. But however, for OTC, omega-2, omega field, uh, and this particular phase, we have a long plateau and the cutoff, and they are different between even and odd. Now, if we go to a different relative phase, you see that the, the maximum is shifted to higher harmonic order. There is a large difference between even and odd harmonics. It seems like uh, 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 this uh, low energy part, you have some minima here, and it is like it is redistributed to high energies. And if you change the phase further, uh, you see there is a, a large cutoff uh, above uh, 2000 harmonic order and uh, uh, minimum here. So uh, unusual shape of the so now I switch to omega-3 omega case. Again, start with 800 nanometers. Uh, you see uh, there is a plateau and the cutoff. And on the right-hand side, you see the ellipticity, this red line. So harmonics are elliptically polarized. Odd harmonics are emitted only. And the ellipticity is relatively small. And now if we go to 2,200, so you see, uh, you have a relatively large ellipticity here. Uh, for one particular phase, you have this parabolic shape. And for other phase, uh, you have a sharp peak here above 2000, and they are elliptically polarized. A linear case is shown by uh, this line for comparison. So, uh, and if we present it separately, so you see, uh, how the harmonic intensity behave, and uh, it has a large ellipticity here. Okay, uh, how we can explain this? So uh, we can use quantum orbit theory. So we have this five dimensional integral. We can solve it uh, using the saddle point method. We obtained the system of saddle point equation for recombination and ionization time. We solve this, uh, this time uh, complex. Uh, then we calculate uh, the T matrix element as a sum over relevant parts. That is part. Uh, these are our quantum orbits. We have some amplitude and some phase. So we, we know uh, complex uh, uh, ionization time and the risk uh, recombination time. If we put uh, those time in a, a Newton equation, classical Newton equation, 
we can obtain the electron trajectories RP, and uh, electron velocity. So from this, we can learn what's really going on in the process. So I will show some results obtained using the quantum orbits. Uh, you remember this parabolic shape for this phase. It is reproduced by the quantum orbits. And the most important is here that we have a pair of quantum orbits, which give you this sharp peak here. And uh, there are other orbits uh, uh, for this phase but they uh, contribute only to low harmonic order and they are much lower. So we know which quantum orbits are responsible for this uh, sharp peak. And now we can present uh, electron, uh, present electric field from uh, ionization to recombination time, vector potential, electron trajectories and electron velocity. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, sharp peak appear here above 2000 harmonic order. So uh, electron is appear here, so it's ionized. And then uh, it moves, uh, turn around and come back and recombine. So this is uh, uh, for uh, this uh, harmonic order and for slightly lower harmonic order, uh, the trajectory is modified, this uh, dashed red line. Uh, what is important here is that uh, velocity at the ionization time, it's practically zero. And if you uh, remember from the uh, theory, uh, ionization probability uh, depend exponentially on the uh, initial velocity. So uh, this explains why the, uh, we have this sharp peak because uh, velocity is practically zero. So the probability of ionization is large and uh, we have uh, uh, this sharp peak. Or if we go slightly, uh, low to slightly lower harmonic order, then you can see this uh, dashed uh, red line here that uh, velocity at the ionization time is uh, larger and the probability is lower. So using quantum orbit, we can explain what is uh, going on and why we have this uh, unusual shape. Uh, now there are some uh, exact calculations uh, for the harmonic intensity as a function of the relative phase from zero to pi and of the harmonic order. So you see we have a, a large cutoff here is changed with the phase and there is some region of the phases where uh, intensity is uh, negligible. And uh, in this reference, you can find a simple model or generalization of these two, two dimension. And there are two versions of this model. One uh, show this uh, yellow line show you the maximum cutoff and the other one white line show you the strongest harmonic intensity. So you see it reproduce very well uh, this maximum intensity and the cutoff uh, doesn't change to count the, uh, how strong is the intensity. So it just show the maximum possible value of the harmonic order. Okay. And okay, now if we calculate this ratio, which I mentioned, so practically you have a auto second pulse train, uh, two, pulses uh, uh, in one optical cycle, if you combine this group of uh, harmonics. And the intensity uh, of this ratio is much larger than for the linear polarized case, maybe five times larger. And group of harmonics, you see that it is uh, uh, elliptically polarized. Okay. Okay, now I switch to the elliptical uh, ODT field. So this is, uh, how this field is defined. And here, how uh, two components of this field looks like. So this is close to white circular field. Important is here that harmonics, uh, which are emitted by uh, in high harmonic generation by this field is uh, uh, close to uh, circular polarization. 
and the result are in this uh, reference, uh, which I already mentioned. They are, they are detailed uh, result for the omega-3 omega. I will show result for omega-2 omega case. Uh, this wavelength, uh, uh, these intensities and the phase is from zero to pi and ellipticity is from zero to one. Uh, this is chosen because we have these symmetry properties that harmonic intensity uh, doesn't change if we shift the phase by uh, if we shift the phase by pi, or if we change the ellipticity of the field. And the uh, ellipticity also do not change uh, harmonic ellipticity also do not change if we shift the, the uh, by pi the phase. Uh, and the ellipticity of the harmonic change the sign. So it's enough to present this here. And uh, uh, two limiting cases are epsilon equal zero. This is practically OTG field. So you have this uh, particular shape with the large cutoff. Uh, there are some region of the phase where it's close to zero. And the epsilon equal one is uh, another limiting case, uh, uh, boundary case. It's uh, uh, by circular field. So you see results do not depend on the relative phase. And uh, uh, the plateau is not so sharp, with, uh, the cutoff is not so sharp and uh, uh, it appears at the lower uh, harmonic order. Now, uh, if you look at the uh, elliptic 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, uh, you can see uh, that uh, uh, harmonic intensity doesn't change too much. Uh, what you can see that uh, this region of uh, almost uh, uh, negligible harmonic intensity disappear, for example, here. Uh, but the important is that uh, uh, harmonics uh, are elliptically polarized. And in particular, this LTC high for a relatively low harmonic order. So you can see here, here, and also here. Or if we increase the uh, elliptic of the field further, 0 0.5 to 0 0.9, you see now it uh, cutoff become lower. And uh, uh, okay, elliptic can be high and some unusual structure appear here uh, for 0 0.9. Uh, what is interesting is that uh, if we have a very small ellipticity, epsilon is uh, 0 0.01, uh, harmonic intensity looks uh, almost the same. This is close to linear for as field. However, uh, from selection rules, it follows if ellipticity is zero, that harmonics are linear polarized. But for very small ellipticity, we calculated uh, that uh, uh, harmonic elliptic can be large. And in particular, if you look at the low energy region, so harmonic intensity is large and elliptic is large. And this can be explained if we calculate degree of circular polarization, uh, we instead of calculating uh, T, N, X, and Y, we calculate this plus minor component is just uh, rotating in one or the other direction. So results, uh, uh, some uh, matrix element, which is the matrix, matrix element, which is the same integral over the travel time and over the recombination time and some phase factor, which is different. So this difference in uh, uh, phase factor is the cause of this asymmetry. And for small epsilon, we can have a, a large, uh, Elliptic of the harmonics. Okay, now I finished with this uh, bicircular and OTT field, and I want to switch to this uh, new result, which was which is published last uh, month in Fidrev Letters, uh, and it is connected to some uh, uh, asymmetry, phase asymmetry in uh, uh, high order ATI by field cycle pulses. But I first I have to remind you what is a stereo ATI experiment with field cycle pulses. So uh, you have a, a, some laser pulse, which is field cycle pulse, which consists of the, uh, so these field cycle ultra short pulses, and uh, they have some envelope and some carry envelope phase, which you can control. 
and carry envelope uh, phase is practically uh, phase between the field envelope and carry away. And uh, uh, so you have some atomic gas, uh, you ionize it, and then you collect the electron on the left and on the right detector. So, uh, and then you look at the uh, number of electrons on the left and the right and how they depend on the uh, carry envelope phase. And this experiment is done in 2003. So you see uh, for phase zero, by half and so on, you see how the field is changed. And the uh, uh, red are uh, left detector and black are uh, right detector. So you see for high uh, order ATI, these risk scattered electron, there is a large asymmetry between uh, uh, electrons on the left and on the right detector. And it is changed like uh, a man of walking. And uh, if you turn off the stabilization, this effect is absent. So this was in 2003, and there uh, are uh, some calculations which confirm this. And, uh, and now, similar experiment is done, but with the uh, different parameters. Now, uh, this is done with the cesium atom and the much longer wavelength, 3,100 nanometer pulse, uh, ultra short pulse, uh, duration 31 femtosecond. This is, uh, for this wavelength is approximately eight optical cycles, so not uh, uh, ultra short, uh, eight cycle, yeah, but uh, uh, it's still uh, such that uh, the effect of carrier and the phase can be observed, and this is intensity. So uh, experiment is done by this uh, group from Jena. So this is Gerhard Paul's group and uh, Matthias Kubel is the first author. And the experiment is done in uh, Segedin in Hungary on this uh, extreme light infrastructure, auto second light pulse uh, source. So uh, here are the main results. So what is uh, measure and calculate it is an asymmetry parameter. And this asymmetry parameter is the, the number of electrons left minus electron to the right divided by sum of these two. So it's, it, and it depends on the carry envelope phase phi. So this is what we measure. And uh, uh, in previous experiment with the uh, shorter pulses and uh, lower intensity, you see this kind of effect uh, that uh, it's just one oscillation in the interval from zero to two pi. But what is observed now, it is that uh, in this energy region, in the interval from zero to two pi, you have uh, uh, three oscillations, some kind of trifurcation because we have uh, this one and this go into three directions. So, uh, Important is that from zero to two pi, you have three oscillations. And we simulated this uh, using our uh, cluster and server in uh, Sarajevo, solving three dimensional time dependent state equation. It took uh, half a year to calculate this because uh, uh, we have done focal averaging and took into account all uh, uh, parameters of the experiment. And you see, we nicely reproduce uh, this uh, region here. So there are three oscillation from zero to two pi, carrying envelope phase, and uh, nothing here and here. And of, of course, for uh, uh, other parameters, uh, there is no this effect. So how to explain this? Well, this can be explained uh, using the uh, quantum orbit theory. And what you see here, is a electric field vector, blue line. Envelope is black. So uh, we have a, a eight optical cycle and the field is maximum at uh, uh, integer and half integer number of optical cycle. For example, here 
uh, the field is uh, minimum for absolute value it's maximum so ionization happen with high probability and we have a for electron which go to the left detector uh, this is a solid line uh, sorry this is a black line uh, electron uh, moves and come back uh, and uh, after uh, 0 0.7 optical cycle it returns so it's short trajectory and uh, uh, sorry we also have a long trajectory at uh, for example three optical cycle this uh, red line and the uh, uh, long trajectory is uh, 1.2 optical cycle they are even longer trajectories but we look only at this short, which is approximately 0 0.7 cycle, and uh, red, which is a uh, uh, red solid line, which is uh, at the integer number of optical cycle, which is 1.2 uh, cycle. Now uh, we uh, calculate uh, quantum orbits and calculate the partial ionization rate for those orbits. And uh, you see, for example, Uh, this one for uh, uh, two, so it's ionized at two optical cycle, but uh, the field is uh, weak at uh, this time, so the probability is low, you can neglect this one. And for example, five, you see uh, the field is uh, weak after rescattering, so there is no uh, such field which uh, can uh, accelerate electrons so the energy is low this is a, a five and uh, we also have this uh, 3.5 so this is the maximum energy which correspond to the 10 up cutoff and probability is high and we also have another one which is 4.5 and this is approximately the same in this region and it interfere with the orbit uh, uh, 3.5. All other orbits can be neglected. And this is our characteristic region where we observe the trifurcation. So it's, it seems that uh, we have explained why uh, we have this trifurcation. It comes from the interference of the orbit 3.5 and 4.5. But uh, we can calculate this. So here are uh, the spectra, uh, sorry, the asymmetry for uh, uh, left one, upper is uh, only a uh, long uh, orbit. So you see there is only one oscillation from zero to two pi. However, in this characteristic region, we have three oscillations and this is for short orbits. So short orbits are responsible for this effect. If we combine all of them, so uh, there are some oscillation in this region, but in this region, low energy uh, region, uh, this uh, long orbit contributes. So we have only one oscillation here. Also for high energy, one oscillation, but in this region, you have three oscillations. So it comes from the interference of 3.5 and 4.5 uh, quantum orbits. And uh, if you look at the, uh, quantum orbit uh, phases of uh, transition amplitude for uh, uh, 3.5 and 4.5 uh, as a function of the electron energy and the carry envelope phase. So you see there are some kind of hologram. So there are some structure here, but you don't see any interference here. Only if you combine them, in calculate asymmetry, you see there is uh, this uh, trifurcation appear. So we call this uh, time domain holography uh, just to distinguish it from the uh, usual holography, which is known in uh, uh, ATI uh, as a process uh, of uh, interference of the direct electron and forward scattering electron. But the difference is that uh, in usual, uh, 
say it uh, space domain holography electron is born at the end of the tunnel and then uh, a reference wave move directly to the detector while a uh, signal wave uh, moves uh, back to the parent ion and interact with it and then go to the detector. So, but they start at the same time from the same point. There is interference, which is uh, seen as a, a so-called spider structure in a photoelectron momentum plane. But what we have here, the uh, time of uh, rescattering is different. One is that, uh, so this time is uh, different. And uh, if we look at the interference, we can learn something about the system, what happened between uh, uh, one time of the rescattering and the other time of the rescattering. And this is happened on the other second time scale. So they might, we call it, uh, just use this term, uh, time domain holography. Okay, so now I am close to finish the, my talk. I will give some conclusion and uh, so what else can be done with this uh, complex field? So what I have shown is an uh, uh, example of bicircular field and OTT field, uh, that uh, instead of uh, linear, we have two-dimensional trajectories which unfold in a plane. And I have shown that we can obtain elliptically polarized high harmonics. Uh, there are some particular selection rule. This can be applied to for example, chiral molecules, so magnetic materials. And uh, here is uh, uh, our logo of our group in Sarajevo Atomic Molecular and Optical Physics, or some of these. We use, as I mentioned, this uh, particular shape, uh, unusual shape of a combined group of uh, circular polarized high harmonics. And of course, we uh, apply this to many other cases. Uh, I have time to present it, but uh, molecular symmetry can be explained or just uh, look at them. Uh, and there are some references for this. For example, BF3 molecule had the same symmetry as a uh, omega-2 omega bicircular field, and we can explore this uh, using this uh, uh, our bicircular field. Also, which I would like to show, but I have time, is a, a, a spin polarized electrons. Uh, so uh, if you look at the bicircular field, we have rescattering, but the electrons, because it is circular polarized field, electrons uh, uh, can be uh, spin polarized. So we have auto second time scale and spin polarization, and that's, uh, I call it the uh, auto spin. Okay. Uh, and okay, I have shown this uh, trifurcation observed in experiment with the few cycle pulse. So we can use uh, various field and pulse combination. And I just mentioned some of uh, my previous work. One is uh, practically uh, first uh, calculations in which uh, the effect of the carry envelope phase was uh, clearly seen. So as you see for two different uh, carry envelope phases, uh, harmonics uh, uh, are uh, completely different in the plateau and the cutoff region. And this was in 98. Another one is uh, uh, for if you add a static electric field, uh, which is for example, um, with amplitude, which is uh, only two percentage of the laser field amplitude. So you see you obtain a very large uh, uh, cutoff, so much higher energy of the X-rays can be obtained. Another example is what I call the uh, magnetic field induced uh, intensity revivals in generation. This is done when I was postdoc with uh, Anthony Staras. And uh, this is interesting. Maybe people should try this uh, again to do some experiment. Uh, you see there is uh, some uh, uh, here, some maxima. So what is going on? You have a parallel electric and magnetic field. 
And you know, by three-step model, so uh, if you have linear polar laser field, the uh, electron moves away and come back along the line. But if you have additional magnetic field, then the electron have a, a rotation in perpendicular plane uh, with cyclotron frequency. So if electron return back to the, uh, to the end of the tunnel in both directions, so this means this linear polarized, and uh, this rotational, so you will have a strong enhancement. And this is uh, in calculation showing these uh, sharp peaks here. And important is uh, that the uh, magnetic field uh, uh, suppress the spreading of the wave packet in two dimension. So it acts like some confinement effect or bottle. And uh, so in, in theory, it is just, uh, uh, you know, that we have a uh, uh, one divided by tau on three half, tau is travel time. So the spreading go with the uh, tau on three one half. However, if you have a magnetic field, then this will be tau on one half. So in two dimension, you don't have the spreading. And this is also increased harmonic uh, intensity. And uh, okay, there are many other combinations. So for example, you can use circular polarized and static field. You know, with circular polarity, you don't have high harmonics, but if you add static field, you can obtain strong high harmonics. Or you can use a, a bicircular omega, two omega combination. You know, if you have a two counter rotating uh, field of the same frequency, if you combine them, you obtain linear polarized field. But if you take one of them is a, as a field cycle, and uh, you know that circularly polarized field cycle field has a shape which uh, uh, rotates in the carry envelope phase. Now it will happen that uh, uh, combined field, omega two omega field cycle, have this kind of a shape, some sharp peak, which depend on the carry envelope phase. So, uh, and uh, uh, this sharp peak correspond to, you can, uh, for example, ionize and obtain the scattered electron which has high energy. So these peaks uh, here in the electron momentum distribution uh, show the carry envelope phase. So this is some kind of uh, auto clock experiment before uh, auto clock experiment was suggested as it was in 2006. And there are many combinations. For example, you can use OTC field, but change the crossing angle of this field. So uh, what I wanted to show that uh, uh, with the new laser, with uh, better uh, instrument, better quality of this, you can uh, try many different field combination and control the strong field induced processes. And uh, many new uh, things can be discovered. So, okay, with this, uh, I thank you for your attention and I finished my uh, talk. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dejan, for the really nice talk. We are all here. Uh, there are many, many, many questions. Oh. <laughs> we are pleased about that. We have at least six questions. So keep the questions coming. We're going to address them all. Uh, before we start, though, I would like to make two announcements. The first one is that our special issue associated with the Quantum Battles NATO Science Con Conference, which is a sister event of the Atto Fridays, uh, is still open. This is in European F Physical Journal D, and it's on quantum aspects of Atto Science. So if you would like to submit, the deadline is at the end of this month. Thank you for those who have already supported the initiative. And also that there is a network because the theme today was uh, tailored fields. There is a network called QTIF on tailored fields. So uh, for the speakers, who are, for the viewers who are not familiar with that, this shows you how important the topic they uh, is discussing is because with tailored fields, you can control and you can tailor uh, in principle electron dynamics and you can do all sorts of things. So let's start with the question. There is, uh, the first one is by an anonymous attendee and they are asking, 
Does the time domain holography have any connection with time crystals? Yeah, okay, I, I, I don't know. Uh, because uh, this experiment uh, has been done with uh, some gases, atomic gases, so I don't see any connection with the uh, time crystal. So, so I don't know. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I've never worked on time crystals, but what you can see is that you are changing sometimes because you have in time crystals, you have unit cells in time and you're going to have some interference that uh, is going to be affected by that. And you have several types of interference. Maybe if you want, loosely speaking, this could be a connection, right? Yeah, I have to learn what are time crystals and uh, how to, but uh, I think it's, uh, it can be generalized to many other cases. So you know that uh, high harmonic generation has, uh, now is doing with, uh, some uh, uh, different material, not with atomic gas, but, uh, also some uh, metallic structure and uh, so maybe that's uh, I don't have answer. Okay, should I read the qu further question? So I see. Yes. Uh, Andrew um, Brown. Or you want Andrew to Brown. There's Diego Abo, and there is um, also uh, Manfred Line. So uh, Diego Abo, nice talk, Dejan. Thanks for the overview of ATI and high harmonic generation. One question, in the first part, when you show the kaleidoscope, fig kaleidoscope figures for ATI, there's always a hole near the threshold. Why is that? Is it because the SFA is not valid? Uh, sorry, I'm just uh, uh, looking yeah, at the, the first question by Andrew Brown. Yep, uh, okay. So I, will I will read it and answer to this maybe. So uh, for both the high harmonic generation ATI in bicircular field, you show various orbits where electron starts some distance. I didn't catch how far. Okay, it depends on the intensity and the wavelength uh, from the origin. And uh, then recombines uh, at the origin. How does the electron to the field? Uh, uh, does the distance somehow correspond to the radius of the valence orbital, for instance? No, uh, the answer is that uh, uh, ionization time is uh, in a quantum orbit theory uh, complex. Uh, and so uh, if you introduce uh, this uh, uh, and take the real part of this, then it will not be at the origin. So I haven't shown detail of this theory, but uh, 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 so it ionization happen a uh, few atomic units away from the origin for uh, for atomic case, and depend if the wavelength is different or intent is different can be uh, fifty atomic units. So it depend uh, on the parameters, but the electron return uh, almost exactly to the origin because the uh, real part. Uh, oh, sorry, imaginary part of the recombination time is close to zero. So this is the explanation in terms of the quantum orbit theory. So uh, it doesn't contribute to the, to correspond to the uh, radius of the valence orbital because uh, uh, in the theory we are taking only ionization potential, not the uh, parameters of, of the valence orbital. That's uh, okay answer uh, for this question. So is it okay for you, Andrew? Or you have some further questions? Andrew, if you want to ask live, feel free to unmute yourself. That is fully okay. Or, or raise your hand. Is, is this fine with you? Or we can contact later. Yes. Uh, just you can contact by email. So uh, I see. Uh, so I, I I couldn't see how to unmute, but I, yeah, no, that that answer is fine. I, I just I, I wasn't familiar with the the details of the quantum orbit theory, so that that, that clears that up. Thank you. Okay. So uh, another question is by Manfred Line. Uh, thank you. There. Why did you emphasize 
the scattering angle of 50 degree into quantum orbit responsible for the ATI in the first part of your talk. Uh, anything special about 50 degree uh, due to different uh, cross section or no, 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 I just, uh, I can choose any one. So it was nice to see 50 degree in the geometry of figure. So no, nothing particular, but I just show 50, but it can be any other. So if I wanted to have a, a, the whole structure shifted to the uh, lower part of the diagram, then I will choose different angle. So it, it's not nothing special about 50 degree. Okay. Okay, Mafrek, is that fine? Or would you like to add something? Feel free to unmute yourself if you think uh, that is, uh, you still have something to add. Okay, that, that's fine then. And then there is Diego. Okay, nice talk. Uh, Mafrek wrote, uh, that's fine, thank uh, you. Diego Arabo. Uh, thanks for the overview of API question. One question, in the first part, uh, when you show the kaleidoscope figure for API, I try to remember which one was this, uh, hole near threshold. Uh, uh, okay, so yeah, the question is why is that? Uh, is this because the SFA is not valid here, there? Uh, okay, uh, SFA is of course valid there, but uh, the, you, uh, you are talking in the number of photons. So there is some minimum number of photons. Uh, uh, and so the energy cannot be zero. So it has starts from some uh, energy determined by the uh, photon energy. And uh, so in uh, SFA theory, you have uh, uh, discrete uh, photons. Uh, however, uh, in uh, a quantum orbit theory, uh, you can uh, uh, do it continuously. And in this case, uh, you do not have this uh, uh, hole as you mentioned. So it depends on the way of calculation. So for quantum orbit, you, you, you can always choose a, a, a small value as you want, but for the uh, SFA, you, start, you have integer number of photons. Okay, that's, uh, is it okay? Yes, that's okay. There is another question, but it went to the panelists on the chat. Um, so, so is Diego- uh, Okay, now I switch to chat. And, uh, From so, Venu. Oh, okay, there is a lot of question. So the, there, there was one question by Diego, he copied it over into the QA box, so you already answered that. And then was a question from Wen Li, and he raised his hand, so we can just allow him to talk and ask the question. Okay, in nice. Oh, uh, 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 For she. Okay, not even. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, okay, now it's uh, Wen, Wen Li. Wen please feel free to unmute. And uh, okay, I see. I see uh, Wen Li. So, hi, I have a question regarding the last study. The ATI phase meter measured the relative Kerr phase. How did you match the experimental result with your calculation, which use uh, absolute Kerr phase, uh, I suppose? Uh, Uh, we just look at the asymmetry and how it behaves. So if we have a three oscillation, so we, of course, we have an absolute uh, phase in our calculation, but uh, uh, what is calculated, it's, uh, we see how the, it, the phase is changed. So we see uh, practically it is uh, all uh, uh, comparison is for the relative phase. So we, we see some dynamics, how it changes. Uh, uh, in the from zero to uh, two pi, and we see there are three oscillations. So we haven't ad adjusted the uh, the carry envelope phase. Uh, absolutely, if I understood the question well.
Apparently, uh, Venli cannot unmute. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, Manfred uh, Mind, that's fine. Finally, thanks. Uh, I can't unmute myself. It's okay. Okay, they feel to write in the chat. Okay, thanks. So I don't see anything else. Huh? No, it is, it is strange uh, that you cannot unmute. It should be fine, but <clears throat> let me see. So we're going to stop the streaming. Anybody who would like to ask questions or hang around to talk today and afterwards, now uh, starting from a few seconds from now, we're going to stop the streaming and the recording. So uh, YouTube viewers, bye. Thank you for joining and thank you for supporting the initiative. Uh, stop now the recording and the streaming. So those who would like to chat with Dayan off record, uh, just hang in there. Bye everyone. Okay, thank you, Carla.